Hello guys and welcome to the latest episode of Mr. Shodi Snapshot Science. Now in today's video we're going to look at the human eye. Now this is a two-part video. So if you haven't quite seen the first video yet, go back and watch that, then come and watch this video. Now, hopefully by the end of this video, you're able to one, define accommodation. We then want you to be able to state the structures involved in accommodation. And finally, we want to explain how accommodation differs from objects that are nearby and objects that are distant. Okay, so keep sight, now let's get right into it. Now, it's really important that we remain familiar with the structures involved in the eye. So throughout this video, guys, keep your eye diagrams close so that you can refer to them and see the individual structures to relate their structure to their function. Now, if we're seeing something, okay, we're seeing an object, the brain, in order for the brain to see that object clearly, okay, the image must be focused onto the retina. Okay, and it must appear clear on the retina. In order for this to happen, the light rays that are coming from this object must be refracted. The light rays must be bent, okay, onto the retina, okay? Now, the light is refracted first by the cornea, okay, and then by the lens, okay, in order to focus the light clearly onto the retina. Now, the cornea is responsible for bending or refracting the majority of light, okay, and the lens is really focused in the fine adjustments of the light. Now, the image that appears on the retina, okay, is actually upside down. However, the brain interprets this image, okay, so that you can see it the right way up. Now, guys, not all light needs to be bent by the same amount. If an object is coming from, if the light, sorry, is coming from an object that is distant, okay, the light, essentially, the light rays are travelling almost parallel to each other. So th these do not need to be bent as much in order to focus them onto the retina. However, if the light rays are coming from an object that is close, okay, the light rays are essentially diverging. They are going away from each other. And therefore, these light rays must be refracted or bent quite strongly in order to focus them onto the retina. So let's just recap that. If the object is distant, okay, the light rays are essentially traveling, traveling almost parallel to each other. So the light rays do not need to be refracted or bent as much in order to focus the light rays onto the retina. However, if the object is close by, okay, the light rays are, rays are essentially diverging. They are going away from each other. And therefore, the light rays must be bent or refracted strongly in order to focus that image onto the retina. Now, it's the lens. We're looking at the lens now in terms of the bending of light, refracting of light. If the lens is thin, okay, the light will be bent a little. If the lens is thick, the light will be bent a lot. Or essentially, the thicker the lens, the more refraction that happens. Or the thinner the lens, the less refraction that will happen. Okay? Now, the change in shape of the lens from thin to thick um, is, is called accommodation. Now, accommodation is controlled by the ciliary muscle and the suspensory ligaments. Now, before we look at how these two control the thinness or thickness of the lens, let's look at how they uh, work together. So essentially, if the ciliary muscle contracts, this essentially loosens the suspensory ligaments. However, if the ciliary muscle relaxes, relaxes, sorry, this uh, pulls the suspensory ligaments tight. Okay, so if the ciliary muscle contracts, this loosens the suspensory ligaments. However, if the ciliary muscle relaxes, the suspensory ligaments are pulled tight. Now let's use that to look at how the lens is changed shape. Remembering, guys, that it's the suspensory ligaments that are essentially attached to the lens and will pull um, on the lens if you want to make it thin, etc. So let's look at that. So for an, a distant object, an object where the light rays are essentially traveling almost parallel. So the light rays do not have to be refracted as much. They don't have to be bent as much. Okay? The, the ciliary muscle will relax. And this will cause the suspensory ligaments to pull tight. Okay? And this pulling tight of the suspensory ligament will essentially stretch out, 
okay, the, um, the lens, or make the lens thin, because light doesn't have to be bent as much, okay? Now, if the object is close by, don't forget the light rays are diverging, okay? So these light rays have to be refracted quite a lot, and therefore, the ciliary muscles will contract, and therefore, the suspensory ligaments will relax, and this will cause the lens to become thicker, okay? Don't forget, the thicker the lens, the more refraction that takes place, okay? So, quick recap, okay, we'll do it with this diagram, all right? If the object is distant, the ciliary muscle will uh, relax, and therefore, the suspensory ligament will pull tight, okay? And then pull on the lens, and therefore make the lens thin, okay? Because the light doesn't have to be refracted as much. But if the object is close by, the ciliary muscles will contract, causing the suspensory ligaments to loosen, okay? And therefore, the lens will become thicker. Okay, don't forget, the thicker the lens, okay, the more refraction that takes place, okay? So, here's a little table that you can get down to summarize this information. So guys, hopefully by the end of this video, you're now able to define accommodation. Hopefully you're able to state the structures involved in accommodation. And finally, hopefully you're able to explain how accommodation differ, differs sorry, for near and distant objects. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and revise. Mr. Ashodi, signing out.